Hi, friends. We are back on a Thursday for some more designer magic. Today, I'm actually very excited because as of yesterday, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I got sent a suggestion. So today, we are going to be going through the basics because there's a lot of stuff. Um, but the basics of how to set up accessibility within Designer. Now, who all is in the chat right now? Let's see. I'm, I'm wondering if anybody out there has any idea or can take any guesses as to what I mean by accessibility. Hey there, folks. Accessibility. Anyone? I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Let's open up this here. Hi, Jessica. I hope. Oh, yeah. That's it. PDF UA. And I think that is universal accessibility. So as I click on these things, you can hear them being said, hopefully. Oh, that was not what I wanted. So yeah, that's what we're going to get into. I'm going to focus specifically on designer today because there's a lot of stuff. And so I'm going to first start out by introducing a few little tools that we're going to use. Obviously, Adobe Acrobat Pro for the reading. Then I downloaded, let me see here, we have PDF Accessibility Checker. And this will be a tool that you can use that can help you kind of figure out what's missing, if it's following the standards and whatnot. Um, and then the third is JAWS. But I think I only, I, I, haven't, I haven't done a ton of work in that, so I'm only going to demonstrate it at the end because I, I, um, Adobe Acrobat doesn't like bullets, doesn't say bullets, but JAWS does. So we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay, so first things first is I went to Quadiant University and we had some really, really great um, resources there. So I'm gonna go through the first basic steps using those samples from Quadiant University. Um, I can post links once I'm, once I'm uh, done the stream. I'll post links, there's, I think I probably have about five or six links on University that really will help you kinda get your head wrapped around this if you've never used it. Um, I have never implemented it before outside of today and it's actually like when, it is easy. It's easy, at least in designer. Um, this can kind of probably be, you know, continued and we can do a session because interactive also has accessibility features and so does DC. But we'll stick with the basics and then um, I can expand at a later time on any of those. Okay, so bear with me here. I just get all my screens up. So. I wanted to pull this up. This is a PowerPoint slide specifically from the the uh, resources that I found on Quadiant University, and it kind of just just gives you an idea. Um, you don't have to read all of these, but basically, there's governing bodies that have standards, and certain standards are required to be met in order to um, to be able to call something accessible. And what that does is it allows, like for in designer specifically, designer allows, um, I lost my train of thought. Let's just get, <laughs> let's just get into this. All right. So I'm going to actually follow some of these instructions here. Pull this over onto my own page. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start here with this layout. I'm going to open it up. So it looks normal. Let's F6 that so that you can see what it looks like. It's just a letter, nothing fancy. So it's got standard letter elements. You've got your header. You've got, you know, some return address, recipient address, and whatnot. Uh, you got a signature, which, which I think at first thought, how would you you know, make a, make an actual signature accessible, but it's possible. The point is you just need to put words around what is seen on the page in order to make a PDF 
accessible. There's obviously a lot of other factors. We'll get into them as we go, but this one is just, as you click through it, it's just the two letters. All right. So this one has nothing applied to it yet. And so the first step you want to do is, let me, all right. So I've already run this in production. And to run production again, it's just F5. I'll do it while we're on here. Um, oh, let me get out of that. I was in the wrong program. F5 in our software. Why isn't that pulling? Oh, because I have it in proof mode. Sorry, folks. Out of proof. F5. So here you want to set your standard engine to be PDF. And then we're going to leave everything else at default for now just to see what kind of behavior is happening with just a normal letter. I'm going to put it through that PDF checker that I showed you right off the top and show you what the errors are. Um, okay, so I'm going to navigate here to my folder for today. So we'll go Feb 7th and we'll call this one underscore one. All right. And then save starts. Okay, so that will have created a PDF. And now I'm going to open the software. This, this is really easy to use. It, it's super intuitive. I'd never used it about three hours ago and it, it's totally a simple thing. All right. So let me go back to the folder. I just created this in. It's February 7th. Oh, maybe I didn't save it to the right folder. Let me head back. So has anybody in the chat, any of you had to create anything within our software or outside of our software that is accessible? I know I got to pull. I, okay. Let me do that. Let me, uh, let me close that out. I have his Skype for business. <laughs> so I'm going to close that. There we go. And how's my audio? I know last week my voice was, and the music was a little low. I just want to do a quick sound check, make sure all that's checked out. No. Okay, cool. I, uh, I had the pleasure of, of seeing one of the PSO consultants I don't normally see today and he has not either. So, um, okay, here I am back in here, right? I think that I did not. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't set where I wanted to, to go. All right. So here we go. And then I want this to go to documents, all of these folders, Twitch. There it is. February 7. All right. I'm going to make a separate folder for these just to keep them uh, live. Output. Just to keep them separated from what I was doing earlier. Oh, it did create it, I think. It did create it there. Let's let's separate it. I'm going to put... Oh. Okay, I'm going to move it in the folder. Features... Uh, let me put it in here. Okay. Now I think I've got us sorted. So let's go to this one. So here we are. We've got our February 7th live output. Why isn't it showing me this? It's very frustrating. PDF outputs. I should be seeing it. Let me double check again. February 7th. Okay. I feel crazy here. Let's see. All right. Live output. Oh, see? <laughs> I know what it is. There's no period here. It doesn't recognize it. Ah, oh, there we go. It's Thursday, folks. It's a real, real Thursday. <laughs> All right. So now we should be able to see it in that folder. February. Live output. There we go. 
Okay. So I'm going to open that, and it's almost instant, super fast. So this tells me, now we haven't done anything to make this anything other than a normal PDF. And so it highlights all these areas where I need to add things in order to make it compliant. And then it tells you what areas that are, are currently lacking. I'll get into, um, once we start to, to pull some PDFs that don't have so many errors and whatnot, we'll get down into these tools within this PDF accessibility checker because uh, they're really helpful. And especially if you're just starting out with this, this stuff I found really helpful in kind of understanding what was happening in the design of the PDF that actually makes it accessible and and um, yeah, so that, that stuff is good for kind of getting that idea hammered home. All right, so let's go back here. I'm gonna close out of production and we're gonna go to our step two, which is, all right, so what we wanna do is rerun it, but instead, this time in production, we're gonna activate the create tagged PDF. And we're gonna step through this pretty slowly. So again, F5, you're in your PDF engine. So to get into those settings under your default profile, you go edit. And then this opens up a whole other world. So right now we're gonna stay hyper-focused on the step-by-step. -step. So don't worry about what's under this general tab for now. What we need is under the advanced. So here we go. And so down at the bottom here is what we need. So we're gonna just click create tagged PDF. I'm gonna hit okay. Has been changed, do you wanna save it? Sure, let's save it. Yes, all right. So what I'm gonna do here then is we're gonna create another PDF and check it and then you'll be able to see that some of the errors are going away okay documents i wish it like auto navigated to where i'd last opened it i imagine there's a way i just all right we'll call this one underscore two and save that and then start so the first difference that you'll notice from the first PDF we ran is that we are now getting some warnings in here. So it recognizes that there's elements within this composition that don't have the necessary information set in order to make it uh, PDF UA compatible. Um, so that's the first, but it still creates that PDF for you. So we're gonna go over here and oh wait you're answering me you can save it under workspace then it will go that folder all the time file manage workspace okay cool i'm gonna practice that one in off time <laughs> but thank you i'm gonna uh i need to set that up because that drives me crazy all right one two we're gonna open it and actually let's just quickly so that you remember what it looked like this is what it was getting without any thing set in our in our designer now this -da. so you can see that some of the items that that were angry pre previously are now a little bit happier but we still don't have everything kind of all set up and 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 in an in kind of a position where this software is happy to say okay yeah this is accessible all right, so let's take another baby step. So we'll go back in here. And then this time around, we are going to add six bits. You're trying to win, you're trying to win. Top of the list. I'm gonna start competing for with bits eventually. I think I say that every week. <laughs> All right, so here we are going to this time check off the create PDF UA and it's actually pretty cool what happens 
when we do this. So again, we're going to go into F5. And so if you'll notice a pattern, most of what we need to do, or a lot of what we need to do to set this up, happens in the in production, in this production engine. So again, we'll go to advanced, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So right underneath it. So you're going to now select that. Now we get this little restricted subset activated. That's cool. And then I'm going to hit OK. And it automatically tells me that in order to make this a PDF UA, I have to have a title. And so it forces you into a position where you, you have to actually start filling some of this stuff out. So I'm going to hit OK on that one. And... I am going to, so when I first tried this, I realized, hey, I can't type anything. Ah, but what you need to do is populate PDF properties up here must be checked. And then these open up and they allow you to be able to give it a title. So we'll call this Fab 7 Stream, just so that it's relevant to today. Obviously, that would be a title that's relevant to the documents. Um, so PDF UA is a, I believe it's universal accessibility is what the UA stands for. And it is the ability for a PDF to interface with, um, I think it's the Windows. Windows has a UI. Let me, I have notes on this. So let me, uh, let me cheat here and check my notes so that I don't get the actual, yeah. So it's the Windows automation API. And so designer integrates with that. There's nothing that you need to do to turn it on. It's auto magically enabled. All you need to do is set up these things that I'm going to go through here and it will create a document that is able to Hi, be read out loud. Oh, is Hi, this Jessica. working? Is it working? Is it saying something for you? Hopefully. Um, and so, you know, um, for people who are visually impaired, obviously that that's important so that they can still navigate through a document and know, um, or at least understand what all is in the document that's relevant. Um, and so do you want to save it? Yes. Okay. I think that, that this is something that in the next, if, I mean, it's already, I've had it come up with clients and they've, they, they've asked me questions about, about creating the tagged info and, and that type of thing. But I think that it's going to become a common thing that people are, are using in every document that they produce and website they produce. And because it just has to be that way in order for it to be, uh, you know, fair, I guess is the best way to say it. Fair for those with disabilities. I mean, we're all going to get old and have visual impairments. So this is, I'm already thinking that I want to just turn on this voice to talk to me, talk me through all my documents. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, well, because it's a requirement, right? And like when you're getting into to healthcare and that type of stuff, absolutely. It's a necessity. All right. Let's call this one one three. Now, if you remember this, we've turned this into a PDF UA and we've added a title. So let's run this one. Okay. So we're still getting those warnings, obviously, because we haven't set up alternate text yet. However, when I pull that new documents into our PS, our uh, PDF accessibility checker, yeah, I think it's going to totally become common. Um, because you've just got so many people, I think even, you know, actually while I was, while I was sort of, um, reading through this and whatnot, it reminded me of a very funny story that I, I'm, I'm quite well traveled and I've gone to a number of places, but for the most part, I've traveled a lot of Europe and stuff. So the characters are the same as our characters. 
But then I go to Japan, and I was at this major like transportation hub, so you could get like buses and trains and subways and whatnot out. And there's no English translation.、Um, there, there's very few pictures. And so it's just sort of you, literally looking at your map book and trying to match the characters to see. And I was thinking, even for, for you know, the, the amount of international audiences that the internet has allowed us to, to kind of have access to, that I think this is going to start to become helpful even in that area because you definitely can also,、um, I'm not going to get into the languages, but you can, you can, Have these things read out in different languages as well. It just has to be set up, and you have to be using a reader that, that has that capability. So I don't think Adobe Acrobat does, JAWS does,、um, but I, have, I haven't spent a lot of time reviewing those to the DC components. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, with DC, like, there's, some, there's some things that.、Um, That are, are software specific to designer in DC that you would have to set up. But then there's other things that you just have to be cognizant of, like、um, flashing, blinking, color space, those types of things. You know, I think that so- sometimes we've become、um, reliant on colors to communicate a certain thing. Whereas when you're dealing in, in、uh, products th- that may reach somebody who can't see, Um, you know, red marking and alert is not going to help that person.、Uh, okay, so lost my train of thought here, but now we can see this is the one where I created the PDF UA and then it forced me to add a title. So we've got the title here now. There's not a big red title brackets and called it February 7th stream. So that's working out. So now it is not compliant because of the alternate descriptions. So now we're going to go in and add those. I'm going to cheat a little through the magicals of the、uh, previously done. I'm going to copy over a parameter input that already has values in it. And then I can just go through that. So connect these two. All right. Has the receipts. All right, so let's see here. These were previously set up. So we've got background one.、Um, just as like kind of a refresher, let me pull up that document. I hope it doesn't start talking to you guys. I can't hear my own audio. <laughs> so the background is like these gray stripes and this blue stripe.、Um, and so. They are just characterized in this as background one. But, like, if you have a background that, I don't know, you know, has a, a mountainside or something, you could put something explicit in there.、Um, but for now, we're just using background one, two, three, and the signature and just some simple text. So, this is going to be this is background one, background two, or background three, or this is a signature. And so, what is written in this default section is actually going to be what that reader reads out, out loud when it hits that element. All right, so to associate them, now I know that I said this was easy, but it like truly is actually pretty easy. More easy than I felt it was going to be yesterday. <laughs> so, Go over here in your layout tree, you find your image. So here we've got letter background image area. So that's the first one. So what I want to do here is、uh, give me one second. Let me make sure I'm not missing any steps here. Let's see, I'm going to select each image. Oh, right, alternate text. I have to just、uh, remind myself here where the alternate text is. There it is. Okay, so you want to go to your advanced tab. When you're on the background image or image, it can be any image, obviously. You just need to make sure that your default text 
is appropriately marked. And then in this alternative text over here in the layout properties on the right hand side, pull that down. We've got our parameters. So I'm just going to put that to background one and it's literally that easy. Okay. So now let's go through and set the rest of these background two. Go over here and we've got a background three and then we are going to add to the signature. Let me just find it. So trick, I think I've said this before, but um, if you hold the alt key, it will open up all of your elements, which is super, super helpful like right now. So here's my signature. And because if those were closed and I searched for signature because it wasn't expanded, it wouldn't have showed me. Um, obviously, if I had a longer list and signature wasn't at the top, F3 signature would have helped me out there. But if, say, this one here was closed and then I F3 signature, nothing shows. So if you if you have that problem and you know that the element actually exists, but you just can't find it, alt and clicking on these expandables and that'll expand everything. And then that way your search will find it. Signature. All right. So there we go. And we're going to put that to signature. Cool. So now what we're going to do is roll that through another production think so let me make sure that I haven't missed one yeah all right so let's go back let's go f5 oh I have it in production already all right so let's f5 this now so we've got PDF yes edit yes everything I think is okay I don't don't need to do anything in here just check in to make sure that all my settings had held from the previous. Let's call this one. Oh my goodness, I totally, bad kitty, I'm gonna go and do that like as soon as I'm off this stream. Because that's my, bi well, it's not my biggest pet peeve, but it's a pet peeve. All right, live output, let's go one, four. Ta-da! All of our errors are gone. So these warnings are gone because they have alternate text now. So let's bring that one in to here. One, four, open. Yeah! So there we go. We've got some warnings, but this is now officially compliant and has some accessibility features built into it now. So let's click around in here a little bit just to just to show you some of the tools that exist in here. I know it, this actually is really exciting, this step. So the first thing I wanted to, is that opening on a different window for me? No. Why isn't that letting me? I was able to double click this one earlier. Okay. Maybe I have to go into results in detail. So let's do that. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so when you want to kind of investigate what those warnings are, and if you're new to this, you're going to want to investigate because obviously it's, it's not something that's like easy recall in your mind. So the structure tree, so this breaks down all of the things. So logical structure is kind of the tree that we have. So it has this art structure element. And if you if you get right down into it, it'll point out exactly what that is. So I'm not clear on why these because they are just text, they're not art, why they're getting flagged, but they're not red. They're just a yellow warning to let you know. And because I know that 
th those are okay. They're going to get read just like text. Um, I'm just going to ignore those. But definitely if these are a concern, like if this pops up and there was, say, a picture there or something, then that would give you the inclination to kind of go in and do a bit more digging and, and make sure that you haven't missed something that needed to be, be set or, or whatnot. All right, so we've got that. Then we've got screen reader preview. Now this I found pretty helpful because it kind of breaks it down in the order that it's going to be read out loud. And best practices, you know, and obviously because we're, we're English speaking, so you want to go left to right, top to bottom when when creating these features that are gonna gonna allow it to interface with the other um there's an official name for it let me find let me find the name it will take me all of one quick second maybe not i thought i had it down in here ah adaptive technology and so um, accessible, that, and that's what the accessible PDFs do is that they allow the user of adaptive technology to comprehend and navigate content. So as you can see here, it breaks it down. It's cool. It gives you the little figure up above so you can kind of trace along and, and understand what each of these things are. And then it breaks it down into each of these kind of individual sections. And this is a signature. It tells you here, this is signature. And we know that we put that in as our alternate text. So that's why that's coming in. And I think actually the background one should be up at the top. Yep. And that's why we see this one. You got your background one up at the top. Those are words that are going to be set. So I found this tool very helpful in, in just kind of being able to see what what is is um like the structure of it and what is going to be read out all right so then document statistics i think it just kind of gives you a breakdown of how many of each elements you need i mean for this purpose this is a really simple pdf ua but these may become handy for some and then we've got logical structure which i also found a little bit helpful just because it uh, it kind of breaks it down into a tree and and that for me is familiar because I, I can understand that you know this is the this is the flow order all right so let us open that up and I'm going to show you, I'm going to close this one and I'm going to open up the one that we just did. Live output. So I want four, one, four. Let's open that in here. All right. So let's see. Oh, in view. Okay, so when you're in, I had to Google this actually. When you're in Adobe Acrobat Pro, if you go to this read out loud, um, you can, there, there's all your hotkeys there. I haven't gotten those down yet. Um, I was going to write like a little cheat sheet for myself to, to do the hotkeys, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so read to the end of document. I can't actually hear what this is going to read. So. Jessica Johansson. 550 South Laurel Road, London, Kentucky 40744, 20 Liberty Avenue. Boston, no, we have to dictate the order. So that's what I'm going to show. Um, we don't need to listen to the whole letter. I just wanted to show that if you were listening closely, um, let me actually stop this so that it's not in case it's talking over me. Pause. So if, if, you were very observant you would have noticed that rather than reading this which is your first left component it starts with this one over here 
And so what you need to do is make an adjustment in designer to something that we call Z order. And what Z order is, is the level at which, or let me, let me open up my layout structure where it's easier to explain. So here is, the Z order is literally the order in which it, it is in your layout tree. And so the closer to the bottom is like, okay, this is actually a better way. So, and you can just drag and drop them. So because we want, background is fine. We want it to say background one, or this is background one. But then we want it to do this address here, 20 Liberty Avenue. So because customer address is higher up in the layout tree and has a higher place in the Z order, it's being read first because it's being passed first. So what we actually want to do before we, we um, run this through production and create our PDF is we want to drag that up one so that your bank address gets read first and then your customer address is read second. So let me, uh, let me make a production of that. Oh, yeah, PDF. <laughs> I was, I had like the JAWS software isn't just when you're in the PDF. It's, it's like you're, it takes over your entire computer and just keeps talking to you. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so let me navigate here. Documents. I've output, so we'll call. I'm going to call this two, because the order is actually exercise two in uh, the university webinar. Webinar. All right. So let's save that. Let's start that. All right, we're good. Now I'm going to pause the music as I play this one um, so that you can have a listen. I'm going to close that one. Let me pause the music. And then I'm going to open up number two. Now let's go edits. Oh, I do it every time. View. Read out loud. I'll do read this page only. This is background one. Twenty Liberty Avenue. Boston, Massachusetts. Four zero zero two three USA. Five hundred. All right. Let me close that. I think that would have played. Now did that did that play? Okay. Were you able to hear the return address get read get read after? Or sorry, yeah, the, the customer's address. Sweet. Yeah, right? Isn't that the coolest thing? I don't know. I, I was like super panicked over this and this is the coolest thing. And my client actually asked me a question about this type of thing. Um, so I'm going to send him on over to Twitch to take a look at this just to get some ideas. And like I said, I'm going to post a bunch of links because Quadia University has so much information on this, um, including a two hour webinar, which is awesome because then it's kind of if, if you're a person like me like I like to read a PowerPoint but some people want to watch the videos so all right cool so another okay let me go back into my let me go back into my steps I'm trying to keep myself focused here guys I I, ca I made a list for myself oh was it Willem who did it I didn't even realize that I'm sure I'm sure <laughs> he's a champion all right, so let me see here. Have a drink. 
All right. So uh, just to point out some some super important things when you're creating these types of accessible PDFs. A beverage break in my audience. Carafe or I don't even know what these things are called. They're great. Less plastic. All right. So some important things, um, the tags and tabbing order determines the correct reading order. And so that's that kind of is what we just went over, Z order and whatnot. Um, I, I'm not getting into table of contents on this stream, but table of contents and bookmarks will allow the user to access content that they, they really need. The descriptive text, obviously, which we've gone over. Um, for images, graphics, you can do it with charts even. Um, barcodes, or you can choose to skip them. I might, I might still, I might get there. Um, and obviously, color, color, and and font are important factors, and font size, and that type of thing. Because sometimes it's not just the visually impaired, right? You might, you might have somebody who's not fully blind, but they need maybe a, a more of a contrast from the background to the to the font, or a larger font. So there, there's, you know, a, a ton of factors that go into go into the the build and the design of it, depending on what the audience is going to be. Swag. Oh, I have to I have to take a moment. So they they had given me this like tangle. It's a quadrant tangle, and every week I try to make it into like a totally new design. And so to, this week. With my quadrant tangle, I made a little mug for my little quadrant squishy guy. Oh, squishy guy, squishy guy. Anyway, swag, quadrant swag. Hit up quadrant SMD. He'll tell you how you can uh, you can collect some of our swag. All right. Um, let me see here. Let me see what I'm gonna do. It's 5:44. So I think I want to get into the explanation on adding headers and whatnot. So let me actually go to the done version of this one, just because. Right. I think, where is that one? Let me find the one that I'm looking for. Those areas on the right and left. I'm reading my cheat sheet now. Sorry, guys. All right. Here, this is what I need to do. So this is another very important kind of beginner step is that headers and footers or even header, even footer, they will get ignored by the reader because um, obviously you know you could have a header with mountains and clouds and your logo and I mean it's it's not necessary it's just a design element you know so that stuff can be can be totally skipped so let's rename this main body here I'm gonna rename it header off the top and if you have this and header off the top or footer off the top then it gets ignored when you put this through the PDF UA so let me uh, let's actually let me create this and do that I think this one ha has the bad Z order yeah okay so let me re send this back out Make sure all my settings are still... This is probably an unnecessary step, but uh, I like to be thorough. All right, so... All right, live output. This one I'm going to call one underscore header main. Because basically... Mm -hmm. 
when I bring this one into Acrobat, live output. Okay, I'm gonna open this one. Let me turn the music off again. All right, so edit. Manage to. Oh, I do it every time. All right, read out loud. Read this page only. If you notice, after Hi Jessica, or after the, sorry, this up here, Boston, Massachusetts, it'll go straight to signature. Okay. And so that, I mean, obviously you're not going to want to use it for your main content. Um, this was just sort of to, to demonstrate that when you put that header, or again, as I said, footer, at the beginning of your, 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 any of these, these flow areas, it'll ignore them in your, in your reader. So that headers and footers and all that kind of stuff, it, they don't need to be in there. But a caveat to that is um, if, only if it's a flow area. Like if it's embedded in, a, in an element or something, then this feature will not work. So there are a few limitations, but really you should be able to have a header um, in its own flow area. And then the other thing, Thing, which I, I haven't gotten too deep into, but you can also control these with paragraph styles. So header one through six, I believe it is. If that paragraph style is used, then it it will also automatically, automatically, magically um, apply those ignore to those fields. Um, yeah, I got. I got 11 minutes. Okay, so this one is an interesting one where we get into bullets. And this is a little bit kind of outside of really basic, but I found it I found it interesting. So let's let me open it. Actually, I don't even think that I need to open the, I think I can just open the PDF. It's already open up here. And so Hello. if this gets read, bullets have to be in, I believe, Unicode. Um, if, if they're, you can't use wingdings, webdings, any of that, because this will happen. I'm going to, oh, let me pause the music again. Oh, it is paused. I'm ahead of the game. All right, so let's see. View, read out loud, read this page only. So just pay attention to each of the bullets. The last bullets, um, I'm just going to play it, and then I'll explain. Hello. L car, L cat, L house, L food, one flower, two meat, three beer, four vacation, silver, gold, platinum. Has it gotten through all the lists? Hopefully. Yeah, so you notice that. So each of these, because these are wingdings in designer, it's it's calling that an L, um, and that's why you can't use them because it's recognizing a character as something else. But if you noticed down here, these ones, this is a Unicode bullet, but the reader in Adobe Pro didn't recognize that. However, this is experimental, so this could go this could go a little this could go a little rogue for a moment. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna launch up Jaws. Jaws is chatty. Tells you everything that's going on. Jaws. Jaws for Windows. My document dash Adobe Acrobat Pro oh, DC. I don't know what's happening. Maybe it doesn't want to launch now. 
desktop, volume in menus, JAWS dialogue. Oh, here it comes, here it comes. JAWS. Please close all applications and press enter to restart. Ah, uh, I can't. Demo mode. Okay, it's got this like 40 minute demo mode, and so I'd have to restart the system. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. Um, such is live, such is live. So, basically, um, what JAWS demonstrates is that even though the Adobe Read Out Loud didn't recognize these bullets, it didn't call them something else, like L. <laughs> but if you're using JAWS, JAWS will recognize the Unicode as a bullet. Um, and it'll say bullet silver, bullet gold, bullet platinum. Whereas just the Adobe Reader is just silver, gold, platinum. Um, and then I was going to get into some, some further image tagging stuff. Let me see. Let me see if I can, I can get that up and running. Let me pull up the, some of the features. Yeah, rather than actually going through any of, of what I've created, I want to just um, go into production again and show some of the other settings that are available. Um, okay, why is that still up there? Hold on. Okay, I'm going to hit open again. It's going to tell me the same thing. I just wanted to clear that off my screen. All right, let's go back to this. Let's go back into edit. I'm having delayed mouse reaction. All right, here we go. Let's go advanced. So when it comes to images and the image tagging, you you have some further customization as far as drop down window the contains stops, alternative the text the or Save all as box. artifact Save and basically what an artifact text. is as far as pdf ua goes is anything that can be ignored by the reader um so if you do, if the image is inconsequential and it doesn't all need to be you know it's it's it, it doesn't add to the context of the document, then you could you could skip it or just not put alternative text. And then in group handling, you'd select as image figure only if contains alternative text. So then that way, if you have an image that comes up that is relevant and contextual, that text will be spoken. But if it's just, you know, some guy on his cell phone and completely inconsequential, then you just wouldn't add that alternate text and it would skip it all together. Um, and then same all as artifact, that would make all your images skipped in that reading out loud. What are the topics? You know what, Sid? If you have topic ideas and, and stuff that you're interested in, let us know. Send a, I mean, you can mention it now. You can send us emails or, or um, posts because we definitely are, are, are open to, to doing topics that are suggested. Stream on Tuesday, probably do so. Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, I'm the beginner DCer. So I think next next time I do that, I'm going to tag it as a beginner because Jay's stream on Tuesday put me to shame <laughs> in my skills. But I get an A for effort and uh, and fearlessness, I think. Um, so in group handling, there there's just a lot of other things. This one is actually an important one, merge original PDF objects. So this is one that you'd need to work with if you're, you know, importing a PDF and then adding to it in order to produce it out with the tags. Um, so each of these things has very detailed kind of explanations and use cases that, that are, you know, important 
for other factors. But for now, for today, the the image tagging one is is the one that kind of is associated to what I've shown today. That there are also like special special ways of handling certain types of content, um, and then the other setting. See, everything has settings. As you as you click things, settings become available. I haven't actually looked into this setting, so let's see what's in here. Ah, beautiful. So this is where you can you can put in your specifications for glyph areas. Glyph areas are gonna are gonna be important when you have used you've imported natively a, a PDF um, or native image. Same barcode is placed here, chart is placed here. And so you can select the accessibility for each of these. So do not read, attempt to read, read default or alternative text. Um, I wanted to kind of create a chart, but realized that there were so many kind of nitpicky things and that going through the process of selecting and then proofing it out, pulling it into the checker software, was was beneficial for me. I feel like I've got a pretty solid understanding on this now. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully you guys do as well. Um, before I kind of start wrapping things up, anybody have any questions or anything that I want that you want me to kind of open up and, and show what's inside? Eight hundred and seventy points. Nice. All right. Well, I think Jay was just putting it in the chat, but um, Tuesday we're going to have a special, uh, a special edition, and so it's going to be a little bit of a fun stream. And then, and I think that's at ten a.m. Central which is 11 Eastern, and then I am Thursdays, so 5 to 6 Eastern, uh, 4 to 5 Central. We should actually probably do uh, do like a list of what time it is in every time zone that, that people have been logging on from. But anyways, um, I hope that that was at least informative and, and give you a glimpse into the accessibility, of, at least for PDFs and the possibilities that are available within Designer. Uh, there'll be a continuation stream at some point of accessibility within DC and interactive. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for coming out and follow us. Um, send people our way. They stay up, each of these stays up for 14 days. So if you want to suggest to somebody to check it out, just send them to Twitch Quadient, and they can watch those videos. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for coming out, and enjoy the upcoming weekend. Have a great night.